Now, Pembe Fredo, another guest on today's show. I am very excited again. She's absolutely amazing. She's got a brand new single coming out. Let's say hello to the one and only Jay Aston. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Now, it's the first time that we've had you on the show. Um, obviously, with Eurovision, you know, around, I, I've already spoke to Cheryl. Um, she said it's just such a crazy time for you and Mike and, and her. Uh, in You know, in a sense, you're, the phone's constantly ringing. You're doing interviews. I mean, do you look forward to this time every year? We kind of do, yes, because, you know, obviously we're associated with Eurovision and we're in demand, and it's always nice to be in demand. I mean, um, So you can't grumble, really. Um, it just gets a bit frantic. <laughs> Sometimes you can't, you know, be in two places at once. Now, I'm not sure if, if you're allowed to talk, you know, talk about it or not, but, I mean, obviously... It was four of you that, that won the Eurovision, and I know now it's kind of three members yeah. that, that, that do it, and obviously Bobby is kind of on his own with some other non-original members. Yeah. Now, I mean, do you reckon there will ever be a reunion for all four of you again? No, unfortunately, I don't think that will ever happen. Now, obviously, do you still enjoy working with Mike and Cheryl? Because you obviously you three seem to get on amazingly well. Yes, we get on well, um, better than we ever did. Um, it's a real shame, and Bobby has his own band, and he is actually the proud owner, or rather his wife, Heidi Manton, who I think was about six or seven when we won Eurovision. Is She's the proud owner of um, the trademark, Bucks Fizz, so we actually have to refer to ourselves as former members or ex-Bucks Fizz. Now, see, now I, I find that hard to get over, because, I mean, there's, there's more of you in... The, in there's, there's Mike, Cheryl, and yourself, so I, I naturally would have assumed that you would have had the, the name Bucks Fizz... Well, it's a kind of complicated case, but we went to the trademark for the tribunal and it didn't go in our favour. And our, um, the only thing we could do at that point was to go to High Court, which was going to cost in the region of half a million. Um, and um, we didn't feel at that point that it was really worth, you know, continuing. Um, we're still managing to trade, but we have to make sure that, our, you know, that we're not just referred to as Buxes and we are former members and we have to also include our names to make the clarification and that seems to be working um, and it's silly because there's plenty of work for both of us and we don't really cross over uh, you know in he does work that we wouldn't do and vice versa I mean when when would you say the last time you've you've spoke to Bobby or seen him was it oh, years well, ago a while before it all got nasty yeah and I was quite close to Bobby so I'm quite disappointed that um, he and his wife decided to take such a yeah. Huge uh, you know, view of it all, and um, and it wasn't nice, and it wasn't pleasant, and it isn't over. I mean, I, cause doing my research on Bucks Fizz, I mean, I was fascinated with kind of how many members have come in and you know and out of the band. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, the star of Dollar, David Van Day, was also in Bucks Fizz for a very brief time, being yeah. a year. To be honest, I think he was a major part of why this all got so acrimonious because oh, he um, he 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 went into Bucks Fizz. I think originally with Bobby, they fell out, and then he did it with Mike, and um, he wanted to call himself Buck Fizz, so I think Bobby took offence to that, rightly oh. so. Um, you know, he was in Dollar, and he should be happy to be Dollar. And, and I actually was behind Bobby at that point. Um, but yeah, I think they just took it a little too far and, and sort of excluded everybody, which I think is totally unfair that the original members aren't allowed to call themselves Buck Fizz, whether we left years ago or not I, you know there's only four of us um and there's been 16 lineup changes in his version um, um so you know it's it's crazy and it's unfair and morally it's just awful um but whatever you know we just carry on i mean you're very successful as well i mean everybody knows you as that i mean i've seen the gigs that you've done and the way people talk about you and i mean mike yourself and cheryl are bucks fizz Thank you. So, I mean, that, that, that's a compliment. But, I mean, Shelley Preston as well, she was also in your original Bucks Fizz for a while, wasn't she? She was, yeah. Now, is, does she not kind of take part in that anymore? Well, she left the band when I sort of came back in. Well, it, well, she left, and then they asked me to come back in. And that's another long story I won't bore you with, but she's decided to, to not be involved because she didn't want me involved. And oh, so... She, oh. I, I don't think she could stand me back in the band and she could stay in the band. I, I don't really know because it all happened sort of very quickly but um i think she was very uncomfortable with my presence when we recorded a, a show called pop goes the band um, oh i remember that that was on living things. if you leave a if you if you you know you're in a winning formula and one person leaves it's always difficult for the person who's going to replace that person um 
and it you know it, it happens in all sorts of bands in all different cases so it's an unfortunate situation unfortunately <laughs> And I mean, what what was very sad was, I mean, obviously Bucks Fizz were, I mean, you guys were in high demand, you were the biggest stars around at the time, but obviously you had that very unfortunate um, coach accident, yeah. which I mean was, I mean, it was very tragic and you were, you were injured, you know, very, very badly. Now, obviously it was, that was the main reason that you, you took time out from, from music and the band, wasn't it, originally? Well, it was, there was a lot of reasons why I left, but that was the thing that sort of made me make the decision when I made the decision. I'd been unhappy for about a year or more. Um, I was unhappy with the deal we were on. I was unhappy with the, you know, the arguments in the band. And then when you nearly have a near fatal crash, yeah. I couldn't see at that point that we could ever really repair and do that much. Um, and I think at that point, I mean, I was a lot younger than the rest of the band. And I, that, was, that was my decision at that point, And that was all I was capable of. And I just wanted to get better and sort myself out and um, get on with what I wanted to do. Um, and it's been really difficult. But, um, yeah, that, that was, a, it was a shame. It was an awful shame. It was tragic. And obviously Mike came off the far, you know, by far the worst out of all of us. And he still suffers today from it. But, um, it, yeah, it was, it was uh, a tragic turnaround of something that was actually going incredibly well. And then suddenly it wasn't, you know. Um, you, you said a little bit earlier on that y you guys are kind of getting on better than you ever have. Would you say that that kind of, you know, back then, I guess you had manage, management and it was all very full on and you were getting told to be this place, this place and this place. Do you think now, because it's kind of a little bit more relaxed and you've obviously, you know, you've all getting, you know, you've moved on and, you know, you've matured. Would you say that's why you're getting on so well now, because you haven't got that constant pressure? Well, yes. I mean, when you're, things are very different in the music business now. But, you know, it's the same. If you have just had a number one record, your label wants you to be at least top ten for the next one. Really, they want you to have another number one. And you have to do all this promo. And although you love it, after a couple of years, you get pretty exhausted. And, um, I, I, you know, the thing is, if you take six months out and you're a winning formula, people think you've, you're over. So you have to really go for it for as long as you can. And the, and the usual time scale is about three or four years, and then bands sort of have to have a break or they fall out. That's kind of what happened to us. Um, now we can pick and choose. There's, obviously, there's nowhere near as much work as we had then when we were promoting all over the world. Um, we can pick and choose, and we've all grown up. You know, we've all got over our egos. We've all got families, and, you know, it's just completely different to how it was when we were all struggling sort of youngsters but uh, would you say that if you could have a wish that you would you would wish that bucks fizz that there was never any of the animosity and that all four of you you know got on is that kind of something you wish for because it seems like obviously a shame that the four of you stood on the stage represented the uk and won it for us and now there's so much kind of there's obviously some arguments there's some bitterness between you know certain me members and stuff i mean do you not does that kind of upset you a little bit um it's a terrible shame yeah and it always was and um, i remember one of the moments one of the reasons I left the band, I thought, the, the, the week we were at number one, and, you know, it was amazing. We were at number one, and they were all going crazy about it. And they were all arguing. Everyone was arguing. No one was talking. We went out to dinner. The record company took that to dinner, and no one was talking to each other. And I just thought, oh, this is ridiculous. And unfortunately, personality clashes. You know, they're still kind of there. Um, and... What, what will it take for that to change? I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, I work with Mike and Cheryl. We have our moments. We have our disagreements. But we're old enough and we kind of are friends enough now that we can talk through them. And, you know, that's just growing up. And I also know that now you work with Brotherhood of Man on, on some shows. <laughs> well, we don't work with them. It's just one, a one-off that the BBC had um, an idea to put us together for a bit of a laugh. Was it Brotherhood and of Fizz? I haven't seen them since 1981. Oh, was that the first time you've seen them so, since then? Uh, yeah, that was quite funny on the one show. Well, it's, honestly, I've been seeing you guys perform, and it's so good. But I also know that you're doing some solo stuff. Um, we've been sent your brand new single, uh, True Love. Yes, True Love. Now, can you tell us a little bit about this? I mean, is this something you, you've written yourself? Um, I write all my material. I'm on writing my third album. Um, and this is a little happy pop song. Um, it's more pop than anything I've done for many, many years. And true love, that's, that's essentially what, it's, what it is. It's just a lady is trying to look for love.
uh, she contacts a dating agency and on her way to her blind date something happens and if anyone's interested the, the video is up on YouTube. Now when it comes to kind of writing an album I mean how exciting is that process I mean the fact that you sit down and you've got so many ideas and you're putting it on paper and you're recording the sounds I mean just tell us how excited you are by the process it must be just such a fun experience for you. Um, it's funny because songs come to you at the funniest of times and um, I, you know, I often, it's often when I'm driving I'm, and I get a song in my head and I think, oh, I've got to record that or I'll forget <laughs> it. I'll pull over and sing it into my phone, which obviously looks rather strange. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you, it just comes to you and, and sometimes you have melodies in your head for years and they don't find a home. And then suddenly you're working on a song and you change a few chords and suddenly, oh, that will fit there, you know. So I've got a library of songs in my head. And eventually, hopefully, they'll find a good home. <laughs> where, where is the strangest place you've ever been where you've had an idea for a song and you've had to kind of record it there and there? Where's the strangest place you've ever had an idea for a song? Oh, my goodness. Um, not the strangest. I've been on a train, and that was a little embarrassing. <laughs> a very full train. Um, I can't think of anything. I suppose there's many. mind. Um, now, I would love to ask you, uh, in regards to this year's Eurovision, I mean, what are your thoughts? What, you know, if you were to kind of say, if you were a betting person, who would you put a bet on doing really well this year? Well, I haven't seen all the acts. Um, I've probably seen about two thirds of them, and I really like Greece. Yes, they're very. Is that the Rise Up song? I think that's really nice. It's very now. It could cross over into the charts now quite happily, and I think that's what we need, need to have. It's a, just a up, very dance track. And I like that. Um, you know, there's there's been a few. I, nothing really grabs me. That's the only one that stuck out to me as a potential winner. Obviously, there's the guy, you know, the guy girl with the beard and, and the big voice. I mean, I think he's quite a favourite. Um, and I, yeah, I, I really hope Molly does well. But I'm, I, I fear we'll, you know, not we won't win. And uh, but if we can get into the top five or even the top ten, then I think we can be um, holding our heads up high. Because it was very interesting, just before we were speaking to you today, we spoke to Cheryl, and um, she said that she kind of thinks that Molly's brilliant and she's going to do really well, and she also kind of said that in recent years when we've had people like Engelbert and Bonnie Tyler, that they were kind of the wrong choice because they weren't very now, they weren't very Eurovision, Eurovision-y, and when you compare them to previous winners, they're, they're completely different. Is that something that you would agree with? I don't with? know who made that choice. I think they made the choice based on the fact that they were a lot of fans in Europe, but they obviously don't have that many. You know, it, it, it didn't cross over, and I think it was a, a mistake, and I think it was a shame for them, um, you know, towards the autumn of their career, to sort of, in a way, put them through that. And obviously they had a hope, and you you know, you have to try and support them. But I think it was a mistake in hindsight, and I think this sort of newer, younger, fresher act is by far the best way to go for the future. Well, Jay, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Um, your, is your single out now? People can buy that now? It is now. It's up available on iTunes, on Amazon. It's on a download. And the video's on YouTube. And I hope people like it. It's been, it's a bit of fun. been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. And thank you so much for being so honest and open with me. Because sometimes it's, you, don't, you don't know what questions to ask without kind of... don't want to upset anybody. So it's been brilliant how honest you've been with us here today. <laughs> well, I hope I haven't upset anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll find out if I get that letter in the post. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's been absolute pleasure, and good luck with all the with you know your, your tour with um with Mike and Cheryl, and obviously you've got all your fans as well that come and see you perform. Yeah. Thank you so much, and we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Take a lot. care. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye.